Uh, hello and welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, I'm Ian. This is Laurent. We do Wikiotics, which is an interactive wiki for language students and teachers. Um, we're an education project focused on building educational content and making it possible for teachers and students to build <laughs> educational content. And you may notice that you haven't seen other projects that are interested in that at FOSDEM. Um, Ah, yes, human spoken languages. Thank you. Yes, well, they're all native to someone. Um, as an educational project at free software events, it's a free software system behind it, uh, we're pretty much always the odd duck in the room. Um, when we go to education conferences, we're the only free software project. And when we come places like this, we're the only education one. This is a, a little confusing. Uh, there is a lot of commonality between the education and the free software world. There's common values of access and openness and a real belief in what happens uh, as a transformative process when people learn how to do things and can take control of uh, their own education. It's confusing then that there isn't more of an overlap, but it turns out that the extent of this overlap is basically uh, tux type. Uh, if you've learned how to type using it, you know what it is. Uh, we have a couple other related projects like Sugar on a Stick and Skull Linux, which are basically just free software environments to be used in school. But there's very little besides basically us and tux typing that's focused on directly teaching content or making it possible to directly teach content. Uh, and in our time going back and forth over the past couple years, we found that there are a couple basic reasons for this. Uh, the one that is probably most obvious to everyone in the room is that teachers don't code. So they don't end up generally making software systems to help them in their teaching. Um, the flip side of this is that coders don't care. Uh, free software in particular is about building the things that we want to build. And generally speaking, uh, we're not trying to teach anything. The tools we do build that are in the education field are generally aimed at self-study. And we have some really good spaced repetition flashcard free software um, and tux type. <laughs> Which begs the question of why should we care? Uh, if the teachers, it's their job to teach, it's our hobby to code, why should we bend effort in that direction if they're not gonna come over and start taking classes in hacking uh, at the local lug? And the answer, I think, is pretty simple. Wikipedia. Uh, when we get together and combine these communities, we can build tools that transform the way knowledge is shared, uh, the way we all access knowledge and what knowledge actually means in the world has been profoundly changed by this type of collaboration. And that's the kind of collaboration that we want to make possible in the field of language education, which is more than a billion formal students right now, and at one point in time is everyone. Uh, so the, the market, as they say, is quite large. We're also fortunate because everyone is an expert in one or more languages at some point in their lives. So we have a uh, shortcut around some of the Wikipedia, well, who is this native speaker thing? Because they're a native speaker is the answer. Um, but there are some challenges with the language community as well. Uh, collaboration is really difficult with language instruction. And it's difficult not just because people involved want to go and make little proprietary educational software. Um, it's difficult because of our collaboration tools. Uh, language is inherently rich media. It's inherently interactive. Uh, you speak with other people. You've got audio. You've got video. But our collaboration tools don't really uh, focus on that type of material as building blocks for more complicated content. With language, 
you also have consensus as a problem. There is no right way to teach a language. It's personal to the student and to the environment, and anyone who's had more than one language teacher knows that they all have slightly different takes on things, um, which is okay. This is great. This is actually how effective education works, but unlike something like an encyclopedia, there is no drive towards consensus that you can build collaboration around. There is no best article at the end of this. There are many, many different lessons. Uh, the one that hits us closest to home as people running Wikiotics, which is a live site with live interactive language lessons on it, is the vandalism one. Uh, this is particularly difficult to language because by definition the people who are coming to learn a language cannot verify any of the material that they're learning isn't some mad spam garbage uh, which is a point made 40 years ago very well by Monty Python's dirty Hungarian phrasebook sketch this is a uh, John Cleese in a tobacconist office asking for some matches, which his phrasebook has conveniently translated as, my hovercraft is full of eels. And if you're using a phrasebook, you have no idea how to verify what's on the right-hand side of the page. A uh, lot of community efforts at trying to get language instruction material together have stumbled over this building block and have not really gotten any further. As a student, you need to be able to trust the material that you are being presented with, and when that's another language, there's a bootstrapping problem here. So we built a new call, a new tool, uh, to address this set of issues, and we called it Ductus, uh, for reasons that are too long to explain right now. Uh, Ductus is a bit of free software. It powers our wiki and is generally available for other people in other situations. And Laurent is one of our uh, two core developers, so I will let him tell you more about the specifics. Thanks. Um, I'll just raise that a bit. Um, so, as Ian was saying, Doctors is a structured wiki. Um, the main difference between that and something that is more widely known as um, say, MediaWiki, is that MediaWiki stores text as long strings of slightly ugly code that you're probably quite aware of. Uh, what we do is we store information as nested data, structured data, that looks like this. So this is not very friendly, and this is not what you see when you're using the wiki. What you see is something completely user-interfaced, um, with nice widgets and drag and drop and that sort of things. This is just a back end which allows us to store rich media information just like language education um, content. So for instance, I'll sh go through a few examples of what you can do. You can have quizzes like this where you'd have a um, question up there, a prompt that could be a bit of text. That could also be something you're listening to, like an audio prompt, a question. A bunch, of question, uh, a bunch of potential answers, you pick the right one, um, and there you go. And then you could get exercise series with point systems, um, feedback from a teacher that could be transmitted to a teacher, and so on, and so forth. Another example is um, this text matching. So you have a sentence with a gap in here. You have to fill the gap, choose the right answer, that sort of stuff. All of that can be put in the wiki in a reusable way. Another example, which we are working on at the moment, is storing podcast type of information. Um, if you've tried learning a language, one of the big problems is understanding, like listening to it. You can always listen to, say, the BBC to learn English, but it can be nice to have something you can take away on a bus ride and listen to a podcast. So that's what we're working on. This is an example of a Mandarin lesson for beginners. All of that content is on the site, and you can just reuse and remix parts of it, translate parts of that, and just teach another language with the same structure. And 90% of the work is done. Um, so all of that information in the wiki is stored in a um, very much Git-like 
um, sort of information. So the, the content, what I was showing you a bit earlier, is hashed, stored on a hard drive. There's a database to access that. And we have capabilities pretty much like Git. You can derive information from a previous revision of, um, of some content, so say a lesson. Um, you can branch things. You can, in the future, you'll be able to merge several revisions, or several different types of contents together into a new lesson. Uh, just like Git, we're not trying to get to a consensus. Um, we support and encourage forking, branching, and creating new revisions and new versions of a similar content. Um, and our URLs in the system are pretty much like branches would be in a Git development system. So you can create them and they can live in parallel. Hmm? Um, one one point I'd like to add before finishing is like we are right now importing information into the wiki um, from the FSI language lessons. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's um, a series of podcasts, not podcasts, but tapes that were created by the US um, Foreign Service Institute. There's language lessons in about 40 different languages. It amounts to a few hundred hours of listening material. We are splitting that and structuring it into the wiki so that very soon we'll have about 300,000 sentences of material in 40 different languages that will be available for any user to just reuse, remix and build new lessons from as well as new audio and images and text and all of that can be you know scrolled and mixed and used as building bricks for like creating a ginormous base of um, language teaching materials. You want to a lot. Uh, I realize we left out of the slides how we address this particular problem of trusting the material. Uh, one of the fundamental ways we organize content with uh, different URLs, uh, where are the pages stored, is user and group pages, which are right protected areas where only you as the user or only the users in a group have the ability to make changes to content. So teachers can be sure that their material is presented as a representation of them uh, and not uh, worry about vandalizing uh, or uh, other sort of student hijinks, perhaps. Um, all of this is freely available material. It's CC by SA, and so anyone on the site can still get to and even edit copying to another location all of this material, but we feel that right protection is a, a necessary and relatively understandable step for taking care of the hovercraft full of eels problem. Um, and other than that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we're happy to to talk here during the last couple of minutes or take other questions. And we're going to be in the birds of a feather room uh, tomorrow between 3 and 4, which is over in AW, if anyone wants to dive into a little bit more of how this works there. Yes. Right, there are two different uh, sets of history. There's the, the history of the object, uh, that lesson as it's moved through its different revisions, and then there's the location history of what material is available at this URL. And so the objects are forkable and movable throughout the rest of the site, but the groups have control over putting any sorts of objects or editing the objects that are located in their particular namespace. Yes.
because Wikipedia is in English if you're reading the English article, and the citations are supposed to uh, support and make obvious all of the assertions in the article. So you have the ability to drill down. 